Uh, now, let me say this. What happened in 2015, uh, between 2015 and now, is not palatable. Is it palatable or palatable? Palatable. <laughs> but, uh, but I remember that most churches were kind of very partisan. You know, we must vote for this person because of this, because of that. And at the end of the day, uh, it didn't go the way we all think it should go. We are there. Somehow, we are there again. And I can't really say we are ready. I can't really say that some are disenfranchised, some are not encouraged, some are discouraged. But let's pick up some lessons. So today, uh, as we round up this uh, conference, we have the CEO or leader of Enough is Enough movement or NGO with us. Uh, she was here with us uh, at the Richard conference, and I, I, I actually enjoyed the discourse we had. Very, very encouraging and enlightening. So I want, I want her to speak to us as I ha ask her questions about governance, about the elections, about you know, what's going to happen at the end of this month. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Yemi Adamaleku as she joins us. Please put your hands together for her. She has gone through a lot, <laughs> especially in SARS or beginning SARS. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, okay, how many of us, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking of taking a poll. Is it okay to do that again? Taking a poll. <laughs> okay, so they won't come and arrest me. I'm in, I'm in Lagos State too. Mm. I don't want, you know. Okay, uh, quickly, can you just greet the people? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, Pastor Yemi and Pastor Bimbo, for having me. Uh, you know, I enjoy these conversations because my faith is a big part of what I do. And underlying that is just the very principle that as children of the Most High God, we have incredible power. And the conversation and the nexus between faith and politics, I'm glad we've gone from the church shouldn't get involved in politics, to us having a political conversation on a pulpit. And that's very encouraging. Aha, clap, please, 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 please. We've come, we've come a mighty long way in that regard. Even though there's still some people that are a bit on the fence, but we've come a mighty long way in recognizing that. And also helping us to understand that what politicians have that allows them to have such power is that they have resources and they have people. People who are willing to do their bidding, people who vote, people who are just around. I'm sure, I mean, it's election season, so you turn on your TV, you see a lot of people at rallies. But that's also the same thing the church has. We have people and we have resources. And above that, we had children of the Most High God. So it's indeed an honor to be back again to talk about this. I mean, I could, I could talk about this all day. But well, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the conference. I caught a bit and pieces of it, but I hope you are finding it useful. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I was somewhere some days ago, an elderly person very dear to me, and I asked him, is he going to vote? He said, he's not, he's not going to vote. And I, I think some people are, are there. Where, where should I have faith in that process? Will my vote count? I mean, okay, get PVC, vote. Why should we still have faith in the process? Because it is the process, <laughs> honestly. Hmm. We're in a democracy, and the only way to change leaders in a democracy is to vote. If it was a military regime, nobody will ask you questions. They'll change your new head of state to become your new head of state. But because this is the system that we have chosen, directly or indirectly, the only way to be part of this process is to vote. So that's why your vote is important, number one. Number two, INEC has come quite a long way from the days of people literally just st standing without even trying to hide and thumbprinting ballot papers and stuffing ballot boxes to the days that we had Mike Tyson on our voters register. They've come a long way in trying to have a register that's a bit clean, though there are challenges, quite all right. Um, this year started with the fact that you can start your registration process online. They've also introduced a process that allows electronic transmission of results directly from the polling unit, so it's a bit more transparent. 
One of the things from the Electoral Act last year that got passed that changed a lot of these things that I really like, for example, is the fact that in the past, even if you, as the person declaring the results of an election, know that the paper in front of you is wrong, literally maybe someone put a gun to your head. And we've had that happen in the past. They've kidnapped human beings to get them to declare false results. They were able to do that because at the time, the law said, once those results are declared, whoever is declared is the winner. The only way you can change that is to go to court. INEC had no powers. But under this new act, for example, if you are someone that INEC employed to declare results, if you tell INEC I was kidnapped or they put a gun to my head or they threatened my family, INEC can reverse those results. So it doesn't need to go to court. Why that is important is that the court process is extremely expensive and it takes a lot of time. So a lot of people who feel cheated, who felt that they won but they declared wrong results, don't go to court because they can't afford it. So that's just one of the things to show that, yes, the process is not perfect. And a big part about why the process is also not perfect is that on election day, we are voting for people who have, in a sense, already been selected. And we've had this conversation last time. A lot of people paid attention last year because we were talking dollars that influenced who became candidates of different parties. That process you can only influence if you are in a political party. If you are not inside the party, you don't have a say in who comes out or not. Yeah, ideally, we can say outside, we can say this is the type of person that we want, but ultimately, those are the people who decide. So with that process done, the only part now that you have a say over is who wins out of the options available to you. And we do have it. So the process has gotten better, and we should have hope in the process. And it's important to participate because that's the only way you can have influence over who leads you for the next four years. Okay, uh, you live in an NGO and you know so much about what's happening. How do you, in your own way, evaluate the last eight years? <laughs> right. I th mm. <laughs> Pastor Yemi, it's not a fair it's question. It's an evaluation, like... Like, uh, like a okay, very objective evaluation. Ah. <laughs> okay, all right. I mean, the truth of the matter is life is harder. I mean, I, I don't know how else to sugarcoat mm, it. Life Unless, is harder. Li life is harder. Mm. At least in my sphere. I mean, other people might be enjoying things that we don't know. And if you do, please see me after. Actually, you don't need to see me after. Raise your hand now. Please, and share with the rest of us what is, how it is working for you. But life is harder. I mean, I heard you speaking to Pastor Tola a, a bit earlier about people jackpying. And it's not jack buying, not just in ministry. Every sector of Nigeria's economy mm. is feeling it. Mm. Banks are feeling it. It's part of why our, our transactions are failing, because they're losing a lot of their, their technical oh. staff. Wow. Oh, yeah. A lot of bank staff are leaving. So banks are struggling to hire people. And that's part of why back ends of sort of our infrastructure is, is struggling. Mm. We're seeing it in our hospitals. I mean, a doctor said on TV, and it's not they told me. I saw her say it. She said, the best advice I can give you right now about your health is don't get sick. Ah. She, yeah. She said, don't get sick. See now. Because we're losing people at a rate that we're... I mean, people, we were, for those who went to university, your friends that studied medicine, they were there longer. If they now were on strike, they were there even much longer. So doctors are not things you pick or you can yeah. quickly produce like that. Mm -hmm. She well, said, so, don't get sick. So how do you now, now rate the... Candidates. Yeah. Well, so, because, I mean, we're going to pick out of, like, we have three major ones now, or five? Four or five. So, I, I mean, I, I know you don't want to be partisan, which is fine, but how do you now, what hope can you, do you see any glimmer of hope that the next eight years, I mean, we are faith people, we thank God, but we also know that we are leading people. Yeah. How do you evaluate the... <laughs> So the current state of affairs to where we are going are intertwined. So things are harder, yes. But we are where we are also because we've failed to engage as much as we should. As because, citizens, right? As citizens, yes. Fine. Yeah. We've, because for a lot of us, it's government is them and then there's us. Hmm. But there are people who make decisions that influence our lives and we should get involved. Now, how do you rate candidates? I mean, to be honest, if you think about it this way, you're hiring someone for a job. The job is to lead a country of 200 million people 
diverse languages, diverse religions. A country that has seen a lot, a lot of people have lost family members, people have been kidnapped, Commun whole communities have been decimated for various reasons, flooding, um, bandits, terrorists. So 200 million people, a lot of people are hurting. Even those who haven't gone through kidnapping, those of us that have to wake up at four to go to work, we're traumatized in different ways. There's a lot of religious division, there's a lot of ethnic division, there's a lot of disillusion with what this country represents and what it has to offer me. Of the candidates who are applying for that job, who gives me hope? Who do I look at and I believe that, you know what, in the midst of everything that we are, can try, it's, and no matter who comes in, even in the, maybe except Jesus, but there's no human being that can come into Nigeria now that will not struggle. Our economy is in a bad state. A lot of us are disillusioned. There's a lot of unhappiness and distrust. There are a lot of issues. So regardless of who it is, there's a lot of work. But in the midst of everybody that's applying for that job, what I would encourage you is to think about it as if I were running a company and I'm stepping out, either maybe I'm the chairman or I've done 10 years and I'm looking for my successor. Who of these people would I be comfortable handing over my company, my life, really? If you think of your company as your life. Because whoever is president dictates the tone for the country. Who would I be comfortable handing over my for the next four, maybe eight years? For the next four years. So that after four years, we evaluate well, very well. Look at it again, yeah. yes. Sir. Very, very important. People are already thinking of eight years every time. Yeah. Like, very, nothing can happen. Very four true. years. After very four true. years, with the same level of understanding and enlightenment, we can yeah. make a change. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, when you look at the complexities of what's happening, as you said, things are harder, economy, um, um, insecurity, sometimes the church just feels it's so complex that maybe we should focus on praying alone, that God is a great God, sovereign God, and, and sometimes I don't blame because they just wonder, what, what can I do? What changes can I, God should just come. In so his should power. Church, uh, so what do you think about that, to balance that or to speak to that? Prayer is extremely important, and we should all pray. The Bible says pray without season. Wigglesworth says, I never go 30 minutes without praying. Yeah. I never pray for longer than 30 minutes. So prayer is extremely important. But do we sit at home and pray and expect our rent to get paid, clothes to be on our back, hmm. our children to have school fees? Hmm. Do we sit at home and pray and expect that our car will move itself, go to the market, buy whatever we need, come back, and we will have food? No. We pray and we act. We pray and we, we act. act. Mm. So there are some in just general life that are called to intercession. So they will pray longer. So that might be your burden for Nigeria, to just stay in the place of prayer and intercede. Mm. By all means, please, we need it. But as a citizen and a child of God, you pray and you act. All of you should have gotten these documents, Office of the Citizen, and it's just speaks about what your role is as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We're also citizens of the kingdom. And that kingdom has its protocol, has its, has, its, has its privileges. And part of the privileges of being a citizen of our heavenly kingdom is that we have authority. We're meant to have dominion. We're meant to influence. We're meant to shape. We're meant to be What's that thing now? We're meant to be the temperature, set the temperature, not the, we're not the thermostat. So we, we dictate the temperature. So even from that perspective, my challenge to you is how, as leaders in ministry of leaders, even in the workplace, how does Nigeria reflect the faith that we profess? How does the Nigeria that we live in reflect the big God that we have? So yes, prayer is good. But there must be a righteous indignation that we have that this Nigeria does not reflect my God. That this Nigeria does not reflect the bigness, the mightiness, the awesomeness of the God that we serve. We see God do miracles. We've seen people, even if we have not seen it by our eyes, we've heard of people's blind people seeing, lame people walking, God miraculously providing resources, doing amazing things in people's lives. We've seen it, we know it, we know this God. This is our God. This is the God that we profess. But how does that translate into the Nigeria that we live in? So prayer is good by all means. But we also have a responsibility to act. And there should no, no, just the, yeah, yeah.
to, to act, right, and take steps, and then God can pick it up from there. Uh, so that we should not be scared of getting into... No, the, not at all. Uh, I, I shared a story today that was a bit scary for people. I was preaching in a particular state in Nigeria some days ago, and somebody top in that state was sharing a story about one of their top politicians, the kind of rituals and demonic things that they do. I was even thinking, I've had it all until I heard that, how they use deaf people to pound babies. Yeah, so then we hear the cry and the groan of the baby, and they use that to do all kinds of stuff. It was so bad that, you know, not just one deaf, just a group of them, and just, they, they source them to help them do the work and things like that. So when Christians hear that thing, the oath, the shrine, the this and that, <sighs> What encouragement can we continue to give people to be involved in the process? The Bible says <laughs> that we are light and that we are the salt of the earth. So that ex example that Pastor Yemi just gave is an, ex is an example of darkness. Hmm. I was supposed even, to be even not gross darkness, if I can, chill babies. Meanwhile, we're in church, and someone will come forward and give a testimony that they waited on the Lord for 10 years, and we will all get up and sing, see what Praise the Lord God. has done. Mm -hmm. But babies that women have labored for in the place of prayer, in the place of delivery, nine months, some man, because of a thirst for power, decides that that child that was born for destiny, for purpose, is his route to power. There should be something that makes us angry. There should be something that makes us angry. That how can you take a child created in the image and the likeness of God, and because you want to sit as governor, senator, house of rep members, state out of assembly, local government chairman, that that child is your route to power. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. There should be something in that that makes us very angry. Mm. Angry enough to tell God, what do you want me to do? All of us have different roles. As I said, there'll be people who are called to intercession and prayer. There'll be people who are called to be armor bearers. You have a pastor, Yemi, you have been born. There are people who are called to them to serve them as armor bearers. Mm. I worked as a church administrator for four years. And I know what I saw and what I heard. Pastor Yemi, we have to do a conference. I don't know if you had the man, a syndicate session or for what? church administrators. We need, we need special prayer. Mm, we need special. Anyway, a side one. You but did administration? In, for four years. How I was, was it? It was, it was interesting. Okay. I, was church, I was head of ministry for Jesus House DC for four years. Church is full of a lot of broken people. Mm. A lot of broken people. And I tell people, and I'll say this just as a side, if I was not, if my relationship with God was not solid, working in church would have broken me. Wow. And I'm sure pastors can relate. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I got it. So we should, we need to revisit that. But, hmm. I was saying something. You can backslide inside it's, the church. Oh, yes. You, you backslide inside the church office. <laughs> it's, very, it's very possible. I understand, very understand. But meanwhile, on Sunday morning, uh -uh, come on now, we're speaking in tongues, things are moving, everybody's, you know, I, I laugh when I, sorry, this is a side. After I left church, <laughs> our church had a gallery. So I found that whenever I visited churches, I would gravitate towards the gallery because my DNA was designed to see things. So in the gallery, I could see what usher was not ushering, what the technical okay. people were doing, who was supposed to be where at what time. So I would, so a gallery was a good vantage point. So I would go to other people's churches. I sit in the gallery and I'll be, and I say, yeah, me? Yeah. Pastor Tola said he came to hide in church so other people can be a blessing. It took me a while to get there because my brain was programmed to solve Always. problems. Wow. But anyway, so let, let, me, go, let me go back to, to where we are. So if someone decides that it's someone else's child that they want to use, there's something inside us that should be very, very angry. I don't even know what question I was answering, that I, I digressed. There's um, about this ritual. I'm, I'm even yeah. saying that because, I would say righteous indignation. When I look at what happens in the West, 
uh, and then in Rwanda. Okay, I was in Kigali. I went through the memorial stuff. And when you look at the way Nigeria is, I believe or I think that we need a complete reset. It looks like we're just using elections to pamper it. That we're not really resolving it. And when I look at the Kigali example, or Rwanda example, and what a reset is, I'm thinking, is there any other drastic way God can allow us to resolve this matter? Protest, real protest. Or because, yes, we are going to do elections now. Do you think he's going to handle this matter? I mean, the thing is so... The corruption is rife. It's, it's, it's multi-layered. But it's not outside of... Everybody that's in a position of authority is still in Nigeria. Everybody? Well, everybody. In that's, what? Position of authority. It's still Nigerians. They didn't bring well, them from... They're still Nigerians. I, I, they're I, thought not, you, I thought you said they are stealing all of them. Mm, no, no, no. Okay. They're not foreigners. They're Nigerians they're like Nigerians. you and I. You said, when, in your opening remarks, you talked about a hunger. Yeah. That ministers must have a hunger for more. We must have a hunger for more for Nigeria. Okay. Because until we want it to be different, and it's not a passive type of want. Ah, I really, it's, ah this Nigeria, sha. Ah, no, wow. No. It needs to be more than that. And I tell people that if we are okay with the way things are, then it will stay that way. You're all ministers. You preach this thing day in, day out. But if we decide that we have had enough and we want things to be better, then we will engage differently. And in terms of what can we do, it's not everybody that will run for office. Ah, now I know where I was going. I'm up here, so That's why I direct, yes. di diverted. Everybody has a different role. There's some that are called to intercession or prayer. There's some that are called into leadership positions, like Pastor Yemi and Pastor Bimbo. Their own burden is different. Their own responsibilities are different. There are those that are called to serve them, to ensure that they have what they need, the church is clean. There are some that their ministry in a church is to clean the church. So you come in on a Sunday morning and church is clean. My point is that we all have different roles. The biggest gift you can give to yourself is to identify what your role is and to run with it. Be clear about what your role is and run with it. But at the very basic level, as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you owe it as a civic responsibility to participate in the electoral process. So you have a say and say, I have been part of who elected this person. It makes a difference. People have won elections by 200 votes, 100 votes. Let me end with Lagos. The current governor of Lagos, in a state that had about 5 million registered voters, became governor with under 1 million votes. Seven, under 800,000, sir. The present, sorry. The present governor. Oh. 700 plus thousand votes. And there were 5 million registered voters in Lagos. My point is to say that every vote makes a difference. Every vote makes a difference. Every yeah. vote makes every a vote difference. Every vote makes a difference. But the PVC thing, is it on? Sorry. PVC, is, you can pick it up up to Sunday at 5 p.m. It's back at the local government office now. Check if you haven't gotten it and you're having problems. Check, just make sure you're in INEC's database. The engagement we're having with INEC right now is if by Sunday people don't get their cards and they're in their database, what are they going to do? They must have a clear answer because they promised that everybody will get a card. So they must have a clear answer. Okay, well, EIE, right? Enough is enough. How did that start and what do you do? have so much of that in Nigeria. We, I wish we had more groups like that, mm. enlightening people, helping people, and taking government head on or institutions head on for better outcome. How did it come about and what do you do? 2010, President Yadua was out of the country. We weren't sure if he was dead or alive. Um, Pastor Dunde Bakari, Femi Falan, or Wale Shuinka had organized a protest in January. Young people felt that they needed a voice in that mix. So Chude Jidon wrote an email to about 20 people, and the title of the email was, Where is the Outrage? And the context was, young people have more at stake than a Wale Shoinka, so young people should speak. Step out. So there was a protest in March in Abuja, a protest in April, and after the protest, we were like, okay, what do we do now? Election, so this is 2010, elections were 2011, and we decided that we wanted to participate in the electoral process. So over the last 12 years, we've done a lot of stuff from protesting to engaging and working closely with INEC to improve our electoral outcomes. 
to working to ensure that the government does not regulate social media. We've successfully, I mean, obviously working with others, successfully stopped the National Assembly four times from regulating social media. Um, we've then this concept of the office of the citizen, just really empowering citizens. You live in democracy, know what your rights are, and speak up. So that's really at the core of what so we So how do you get that material? It's outside. It should have been given to everyone, but it's outside oh. at our table. Do we have this? Some do, some don't. Okay. But please, pick please. if you don't have. It's free, it's, it's, it's free for everyone. Um, what Let's move it around, please. Please. And there's a book here that... Um, this tells a bit of our story. Um, it's... Yeah, our story over the last 12 years, different people contributing to it. Pastor Yemi was graciously at the launch in December. Thank you very much. So please grab a copy and use that also to support the work that we do. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit out of the line, but I've always wondered how you fund yourselves. Um, how do you do that? Funding mostly from Western nonprofits that believe in governance and believe in democracy. But over the last two years, we've seen more and more Nigerians decide to support us in little and big ways. 5,000, some people just send 5,000 naira to us, 10,000 naira, and some send more. But, and we're also trying to shift it more because any foreign donor who decides they are no longer interested in Nigeria, they, just cut off. they, they can cut off. But how can Nigerians, I mean, we as Christians, I, I realize that we're, we're used to giving offerings and in church, you know, church. But I realize that um, giving ought to be beyond that. We need to support groups like this. I believe in group like, uh, groups like that, and our church tries as much as possible to support. So how can people support if they want to support? Because you're doing a lot, and I, I can't just imagine a day waking up and AI is not functioning. Because everything is good. Like SNG now is not as vibrant as it was. So I can imagine if there was no EIE, the pressure on INEC, the, agita the agitations, the back and forth, the educating of the people, like us, churches, that what if nobody's doing that? So I want to encourage uh, churches, individuals, thank God for offerings, uh, building of churches, but there are other charitable givings that help humanity that I believe um, would, um, would impact our society. And as I said, if the foreign guys stop investing, are they going to go to bed? So how can people support, you know, how can they get your details or... A um, website. A website. It's actually it's at the back of this. Very simple. It's eie.ng. So it's at the back of the passports if, that you get. Yeah, and please buy a book. It's a fun book. It has contributions from everybody from Tubaba to Pastor Tunde Bakare to Aisha Yesufu. So it's a, good, it's a good reflection of Nigeria's journey over the last decade in the governance space. But yeah, thank you. So your website? eie.ng. Now I was saying that it's at the back of the passports, so it's easy for oh, people okay. to see. E-I-E dot N-G. Thank you. Do you see us having elections? <laughs> ah, you don't want elections, Pastor Yemi. That's a question I asked, too. <laughs> Me too, I asked a question. No, no but yes. Okay, I, I see us <laughs> having elections. Yeah, I, I do. And I really, we do, actually we need elections. And for those who might, for whatever reason, think maybe not, we do need to have elections. Because okay. there's just too, there's a lot of tension in the country that we need these elections to come peacefully by the grace of God and go so we can move on and begin to rebuild. There's a lot to do and we need the state to pass from, I mean, just from security issues to the new CBN policy to TVs to rallies to all sorts. We just need, in a sense, to a return to life, ah. so to speak. Sorry, uh, the questions I have here, the questions we're going to have, it's not about election. It's about all the things we've been learning because I'm hearing what is obedient movement here. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm saying, how do you resist temptation of 20 million to cast my vote? Ah. But it's a good question, though. Ah, okay. Maybe we should be answering this once more. Pastor Godman is close by. Uh, I think he's in the complex already. Ah, but I want us to ask questions about <laughs> church growth, too. <laughs> about all the things we've learned because I'm seeing. <laughs> As churches in Nigeria, can we take a stand on particular candidates in all spheres of governance? Very good question. I personally do not believe that a pastor on a pulpit should tell their congregation who to vote for. <laughs> and the reason is simple for me. In every church, in this church, there are APC members, 
the PDP members, the Labour members, yeah. their AAC members, SD, the members of different parties. I think it puts the pastor in a very difficult position to align with a party. Pastors should be non-partisan. However, pastors have a responsibility to, to encourage their congregations, one, to, to vote. vote. Number two, to think through why. Because ultimately, your voting choice is your choice. I live in Ikeja local government. If I say PDP is the way to go, and you live in Kosofe or wherever, and the PDP candidate there is not very helpful to your life, you will say the pastor said. No. Salvation, as we all know, is personal. God will not ask you what your man of God said or your spiritual father said. He will ask you what I told you and what you were convicted to do. We are all adults and we're all engaging. We pray, ask God for leading. And then really honestly, and we're also a very privileged group because we can read, we can follow manifesto, we can follow so conversation, can an informed so formed deci decision. Informed decision yeah. And I said earlier, you're hiring president, and let's not forget, before I forget, we are voting for five people, not just Mr. President. Mr. President, in Lagos, your governor, your Ooh. senator, your House of Rep member, and your State House of Assembly member. Each of them have different roles that they play in your life. So please pay attention. You are hiring a CEO. What qualities do I want my CEO to have? And which one of these ones? Tick those boxes with, God, with the Holy Spirit as a guide as well. Okay, uh, this person said, this question is directed to PYD, but you might have to have. So why has the church not taken a stand in whom who we should vote for? I say this because it's obvious other candidates are Muslims and they can take a stand against the church if they win. Cyrus, our favorite Bible character that was not a Christian. So it's honestly not about the faith that we profess. Um, how many people here know people who say they are Christians, but there's nothing Christ-like in their lives? Just a show of hands. Plenty, somebody said plenty. So why are we now making that a thing? Because somebody says they're Christian, and that becomes your benchmark for if you vote them or not. No, by their fruits you shall know them. Look at the characters. What, are, what do they have to offer? Dubai, people. Pastor, you said people should travel. They should get exposure. Yes. I mean, right. Dubai, there's not a Christian in any management position. So but is Dubai there? not functional? Is it not? has nothing to do with your faith in that sense. Rather, our faith should help us shine better, but we are the largest, probably the largest Christian nation, and we are struggling. Hey. Praise God. Um, we should also be careful that uh, we're hiring a president, not a Sunday school teacher <laughs> or a pastor. Because sometimes when people zero it down to religion, it looks like you are, you are looking for a pastor to lead your country. No, you're looking for a leader. I might not belong to your faith. I might belong to your faith. Please, how do you resist temptation of 20 million to cast my vote for someone I know is not coherent in speech? You will not be tempted beyond what you are able to bear. Amen. Hallelujah. They won't bring it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you cannot handle the temptation. <laughs> Nobody will bring 20 million to you. Please, sir. Whom do you want me to vote for as everything has become like this? <laughs> Everything has become like this. Well, you know what, Pastor Yemi, I think it's uh, actually important that we, yeah. I believe it's, in a way, it's almost as if we are outsourcing responsibility. responsibility. Yeah. But no, 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 it's, it's the situation of things. We're just tired. For eight years. We're just tired. PhD is four years. Master's one and a half years. PhD. We've gone through PhD of... But the more reason why you should be convicted of who you want to vote, vote for. There is fatigue. Eh, okay. Me, I'm, I'm just tired. I'm so tired. this person is tired. They say, okay, oh, just tell me, oh, just tell me where to go. Who should I vote for? As the, Lord, as the Lord leadeth. When you get there on election day, maybe they'll give you ballot paper. Just say, Holy Spirit, unto, unto you I commit this ballot paper. Guide my hand. Amen. And when you stop, I mean, we can do that one too now. <laughs> I mean, I, I know we can be very tired, but we've been through this kind of thing, even our Christian work. Yeah. So we yes. can't afford to now exempt the, um, the gov governance thing from our Christian work. Yeah. We can't be tired. I believe people should vote their conscience in, in the sense that what you believe is the right. Whether it works or not, it's easier for God to pick that as a seed and yeah. work with. Yeah. Rather than just, I'm not voting or vote for somebody else. Vote the right way. If somebody now chooses to steal that vote or do something, then um, that's where God can come in. But not doing anything or doing it anyhow is a recipe for 
any kind of outcome. Good afternoon. My question is, how do we stay safe during this upcoming election? Should we stay home with food? But it's a, it's a very valid question. Yeah. Because even right now, it's hard to buy food in some ways because if you don't have cash, people are trying to figure out a way around it. So it's a very valid question. For perishables, that if you feel comfortable, depending on where you live as well, how close you are to a market, how close you are to get things, whatever makes you feel comfortable that you have the resources to do, please do it. Please do it. And, a way, and another thing about staying safe, yes, voting is important and we want people to vote. However, not at the risk of your life. So if there's anything that makes you uncomfortable or anything around you that you do not see, if it's within your power to escalate it and get help, please do so. You know somebody you can call, the DPO is on speed dial for you. Please do so. But you need to say that again. When people feel there's danger, they should... Go home. Okay. Go home. Oh, yeah. Hmm. If you can, which is why I say if you have the resources and you're in a position to escalate and get help, please do so for those who are around and also so that you can vote. But if you are not, if you don't think you can, your safety is priority. Please, go home. Hmm. That's a very good one because sometimes people just think based on what we are saying they can put themselves in harm's mm -hmm. way and then it's, wow. it's not like that okay i requested a new pvc and a transfer however it is neither at the old <laughs> or the new location i have made several attempts but no headway what what do i do you know so the thing to do for everyone is as long as you are in inex database and that's as i said that's where we're working with inec on so INEX database, I hope it's a voter as in as a voter with an S dot INEC Nigeria dot org. So voters with an S plural dot INEC Nigeria dot org. If you are in that database, that's what we're trying to get INEC to be clear about. So as of Sunday, if people are not able to get their PVC, what are you going to do? We don't have an answer yet. They will give an answer, Sham. They will give an answer. Let's put our hands together for uh, Yemi. Thanks for blessing us.